just uh, why don't you talk to us a little bit about like when did you start playing football? Yeah, so it's actually a pretty interesting story. Um, I was playing basketball in seventh and eighth grade, and I went to a pretty small private uh, Catholic school my whole time. And um, the head basketball coach for seventh and eighth grade also happened to be the uh, varsity football coach. So after my eighth grade year, their kicker, the previous one, had graduated, and um, so he asked me, he was like, come out and give it a shot. He knew I played soccer, so I went and tried, and I really liked it, had a lot of fun, and I was also pretty good at it, which made a pretty big difference, so stuck with it, and then really got into it more like my sophomore year of high school, started really working towards it, found out I could play in college if I really worked at it, so I did, and here I am today, really. How hard was it? Like, did the soccer skills help you? How, how does that work out? They did. So at first, honestly, I was just, I didn't have any idea what I was doing to the point where like it wouldn't stress me out. So I'd run out there and it was like, all right, it's just a field goal. Like, I don't really know what I'm doing. So I just went out and kicked the ball and usually they went in. It was pretty easy. So when did you realize you could maybe even take this to the collegiate level and, and eventually get a scholarship? Yeah. So it was, I believe it was September after my freshman season, before my sophomore season, or no, it would have been November, November. And um, I kicked with my current kicking coach, Andrew Gantz, for the first time. And I went out, like, again, still not really having any clue what I'm doing, just kicking the ball like I knew how to do it. And um, I hit some really long ones. It was a windy day, so I hit a couple 60 plus, And he, he told me, he was like, there's absolutely no reason why you can't play Division One college football. And that was the first time that anybody said that to me. And I was like, wow. like. Maybe I will. Maybe I'll try. So how'd you end up here at Miami? Uh, it was COVID. It was interesting recruiting. Miami recruited me a little bit before COVID happened. So they got that jump Just start. To be honest, we were the only ones that wanted <laughs> <laughs> They were the only ones that wanted me. <laughs> they were 100% the only ones that wanted me. But uh, yeah, so I got to go on a junior day. I got to uh, come to campus, go to a, I think I went to two games and really experience it not to mention it's really close to home I'm from Cincinnati so nice to have my family around and it really ended up being a pretty easy decision that video the next year your sophomore year goes viral you make that kick and you get put on scholarship like can you just what what was that feeling like so that one's a really interesting story. So I was struggling that fall camp. I mean, struggling, like really probably the worst slump of my life. And nothing was going good. Team periods were going bad, wasn't making my kicks. And it was getting to the point where it was like, all right, like enough of like a slump, like it's time to start making kicks. And that one was really the one where I went out and I just said like, screw all the thoughts that I'm having, like screw all this, just kick the ball, see where it goes. And that's what I did. And it went through and I was like, I was already so relieved. I was like, thank God. Like I just finally broke down the barrier. And then I hear Coach Martin behind me say something. And I was like, he couldn't have just said I was on scholarship, right? Like, no way. And then I hear everybody just start running into the middle. And I was like, oh my God, like this is actually, like, I can't believe it. It was, it was just fantastic. The pictures will tell the story here. So you hit that kick, then you go to Northwestern, make a game-winning kick. Do you feel like that was kind of your first time you really put yourself on the map? A little bit, yeah. So that game too, struggled in that game. Yeah, it's always the struggling games. Whenever I'm struggling, something good happens. But yeah, I missed two in that game, and I felt personally that the only reason why I even had to go out and kick that last one was because of me. So the least that I could do was go out and make it. And... I did, and that was another great feeling of relief. Obviously, I was there. I remember when you got the phone call that you, when you were told that you won. Mm -hmm. But it's been a while now. Like, have you had time to really kind of reflect and just what that meant, like to get that phone call to, around some of your your special teammates and that yeah. told that you won this award? That that one was. Again, a crazy one. I was at another low there because there was a lot of stuff going on. Um, not to hide from it, I was in the transfer portal at the time, so I was incredibly stressed out trying to navigate that. I knew I felt like I wanted to come back here, but 
that was just an emotion. I felt like with my head I needed to make a better decision, but I knew I had to trust the emotion in the end. And I went to that dinner. I almost didn't go. I like because they just said it was like a um, whatever it was like recap of the season. Like we were just gonna have like our spec dinner, and I was like in such a bad place mentally before that. So I was like, I might just not go. But I was like, all right, whatever, I'm gonna go. I went like, I think I was like 10 or 15 minutes late. I rolled in in a bad mood and we all sat down and like people were talking and stuff. And I was just kind of being quiet in the corner, not really saying much in a terrible mood. And then Coach <laughs> Coach Bernowski hands me his phone. And um, it was the dudes, like the guys from the uh, Groza ceremony, like I knew them. And um, I was like, oh my God, like I know exactly what this is. <laughs> That talk about a polar mood change from like right here to here. It was unbelievable. Literally the bottom of the deepest pit to the top of the highest mountain. I couldn't believe it. I, I just started crying really. The emotions were completely overwhelming. It was one of my biggest goals that I set really before the season is like the unrealistic goal. It was like the goal that you set to push yourself because there's a good chance you don't accomplish it because it's so monumental, but you might as well try, and I ended up accomplishing it, which meant the world to me. It was such a good feeling. You've reached the mountain. Like, what, what's next? 2024 season, what's next for Graham Nicholson? The next mountain. <laughs> I'll find another one to climb.